During the Miocene, some 10 million or more years ago, our ancestors lived in the trees. However, the hominoids that would eventually lead to the human species abandoned their arboreal heritage and evolved bipedal locomotion. The ability to walk upright or use bipedal locomotion is unique to modern humans and our hominid ancestors. It is this biological homology that establishes an evolutionary connection between the Artipithecines, Australopithecines, and species in the Homo genus. Asking why our ancestors came down from the trees and walked on two legs, however, is the wrong question because it fails to understand the environment that bipedal locomotion evolved. It wasn't a matter of ancestral hominids deciding to shift from an arboreal heritage, but rather a drastic change that occurred in the global climate which took place towards the end of the Miocene, some 10 million years ago. As the climate continued to change during the Pliocene, Forest reduced in size, and the savanna that's characteristic of southern and eastern Africa began to develop. Problematically, quadrupedal am mammals have difficulty regulating body temperature. They tend to overheat. If our ancestors relied on cooler periods of the day to gather food, they would do so at great costs. Even if our ancestors used impromptu tools, they would be no match for larger predators. During the hottest periods of the day, then, Large quadrupeds like saber-toothed lions took advantage of the limited shade, conserved energy, and regulated their body temperature. In contrast, bipedalism appears to offer the early hominids a way to increase efficiency and exploit resources while the potential predators rested in the shade. This mode of locomotion increased reproductive success and was inherited by subsequent hominids. The next uniquely human feature emerged with Homo habilis. They were the first hominid to manufacture tools. Tool manufacturing emerged alongside a shift in the hominid diet. The Old Duan tool tradition associated with Homo habilis facilitated meat scavenging and an allocation of resources and their brains reaped the benefit. Over time a new hominid began to emerge, Homo ergaster and Homo erectus. We do not know which hominid led to Homo sapiens. However, cooperation and the development of new tools marks their emergence. The Acheulean tool tradition begins and belongs to Homo erectus. The form and function of the new tool tradition suggests that our ancestors began to abandon the strict scavenging associated with earlier species. They began to hunt. Eventually, fire became one of the tools of the early hominids. Not only did it allow them to make use of caves and expand out of Africa, but they did what any smart hominid would do. They barbecued their meat. Increased cooperation, hunting encampments, and eventually occupation of caves coincides with the use of fire. Homo erectus was the first hominid to migrate of Africa. They spread to nearly every region of the Old World. From Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergiensis evolved, and this led to various subspecies within Homo sapiens, including our own Homo sapiens sapiens, some 200,000 years ago. Then, somewhere around 90,000 years ago, ways of humans began to migrate out of Africa. They would eventually invent new tool technologies, complex languages, and art. Homo heidelbergiensis also led to a cold adapted subspecies that inhabited Europe and the Middle East, Homo sapiens neanderthaliensis. While popular culture often depicts the Neanderthal as a dumb brute, this does not represent the group of individuals that Homo sapiens sapiens encountered as they exited Africa and began to migrate into the Middle East and Europe. Evidence from excavations suggests that Neanderthals were intelligent and complex humans. They too possessed a highly developed Paleolithic tool industry, the Mousterian tradition. Neanderthals are, perhaps, closer to us than we think. In addition to possessing some of their DNA, Neanderthal sites provide the first evidence of care and compassion in the archaeological record. Not only did they care for the sick and injured, as Shandidar excavations suggest, but they buried their dead and included grave goods in these burials. Perhaps they too had philosophized about the possibility of an afterlife. It is from this long lineage of hominids that we Homo sapiens sapiens have descended from, and as Darwin noted, with modification. <laughs>